So I was doing research for a different commentary, and it involved me watching this old segment from Bill Maher from September of 2007, and it bugged the fuck out of me, and Bill Maher still says shit like this to this day, so I view it as fair game, I'm covering it. <laughs> and finally, new rule, if you believe you need to take all the pills the pharmaceutical industry says you do, then you're already on drugs. <laughs> uh, yes, it's that time in the campaign where all the candidates are presenting their health care proposals. Hillary's covers children's teeth. Edwards has one that includes maintaining gorgeous shiny hair. Damn, this really is old. This was back before mentioning John Edwards required you to use the phrase extramarital affair in the same sentence. <laughs> but none of the plans address the real problem. We won't stop being sick until we stop making ourselves sick. Mm. Because, <clears throat> because there is a point <clears throat> where even the most universal government health program can't help you. They can't outlaw unhealthy food or alcohol or cigarettes. Just pot, sadly. Never mind, the U.S. government did actually ban alcohol at one point, but I might just be nitpicking here. Because, you see, the government isn't your nanny. They're your dealer. <laughs> and they subsidize illness in America. Mm. They have to. There's too much money in it. You see, there's no money in healthy people. Never mind that healthy people would actually be able to contribute to the economy, therefore giving the government an incentive to keep the population healthy? Fuck, a study from back in 1985 found that the total cost of illness in just the year 1980 on the U.S. economy was $455 billion, or about $1.6 trillion in 2022 dollars. Bill, if the government lacked any incentive to keep people healthy, why would it set up things like the FDA, which specifically exists to regulate products and make sure they are not, you know, unhealthy? For funsies? And there's no money in dead people. The funeral industry would beg to differ. The money is in the middle. People who are alive, sort of. <laughs> But with one or more chronic conditions that puts them in need of Celebrex or Nasonex or Valtrex or Lunesta. Fifty years ago, children didn't even get type 2 diabetes. Now, it's an emerging epidemic, as are a long list of ailments, which used to be rare and have now been mainstreamed. Things like asthma and autism and acid reflux, and arthritis, allergies, adult acne, attention deficit disorder, and that's just the A's. <laughs> Wait, isn't this rant supposed to be about how corporations are making money off of treatment for illnesses? What treatments for autism do you think exist that they are making money off of? Is the real money in autism pills I've just never heard of? Anybody wonder why we live with all this illness? Mm. I'll tell you why. At the L.A. County Fair last week, they were serving something called fried Coke. <laughs> now, my first thought was, gosh, what a waste of a perfectly good eight ball. <laughs> But no, they actually pour the Coca-Cola syrup into a deep fryer. Oh, my God. Then put it in a cup and top it with sugar and whipped cream and a cherry, because, you know, fruit is good for you. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why people have asthma and autism? Because they had a fried Coke at a county fair in 2007. It almost makes too much sense. I don't even know how to respond to this. It's so fucking self-evidently stupid. Yes, Bill, all of our diseases are linked to the fact that you, at a county fair, a place known for rather strange forms of junk food, like, what were you expecting to find at a county fair, Bill? Did 50 years ago they serve salads? I could be wrong, I haven't checked, but I highly fucking doubt it for some reason. In Hillary Clinton's health plan, the words nutrition and exercise appear once. The word drugs, 14 times. Just as the pharmaceutical companies wanted.
What would a universal health care plan that covers diet and exercise even look like? Is the government going to provide everybody gym memberships under that system? Mm. You know, they're ad weasels. <clears throat> love to say when diet and exercise fail well diet and exercise don't fail can we get a little bit more context as to what these ads are for i mean i assume medication but for what illnesses and furthermore what diets and what exercise you can't sit ups the autism away bill a fact brought home last week by a new duke university study that showed exercise yes exercise is just as effective a cure for depression as Paxil and Zoloft. I mean, I'd assume all three of those things are equally effective as cures for depression. Given depression can't be cured, that's not how depression works. Do you mean as a treatment for depression? Bill, you can't even get the basic fucking terminology of what you're discussing right. I'm losing my fucking mind here. With that said, I did look up the study, and here is a quote from it that Bill, I guess, didn't read. It also should be emphasized that the intent of our study was not to determine if exercise is superior to sertraline. Did you even read this study, Bill? You know, <laughs> if Republicans can sell the idea of preemptive war, Democrats have to at least get us interested in the idea of preventive medicine. I know some of my audience is too young to remember, but there was no preventive medicine in 2007. Seriously, if you asked for a mammogram, they would have looked at you like you said Donald Trump was going to be president. Someone has to stand up and say that the answer isn't another pill. The answer is spinach. Because when I think of the picture of health, I think of Popeye the Sailor Man. Mm. Okay, not spinach. Turns out that crap will kill you, but you know what I mean. I think that says everything that needs to be said about this rant. Good night and good luck.